Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now this video is special, two for the price of one. Now more about that later in the video. So I've had this radio sat in a box for a couple of weeks now and thought it was time to take it out and take a look. This is the Giant Pi FD4XR, a dual band handheld transceiver that covers 136 to 174 megahertz and then 400 to 520 megahertz. Now, I'm not even going to mention what the advertised power levels are, otherwise you'll fall off your seat, but keep watching as we'll test that later. In the box, we get the usual suspects of accessories, but with a rather sparse manual that appears to be more in Chinese than English. The included antenna supports the entire frequency range of the radio. Also included is a desktop charger, although this radio does have a USB charging, which we'll look at shortly. Now mine came with the UK plug adapter for the desktop charger, which is a bit of a novelty these days. The included battery states that it has a capacity of 4800 milliamp hour, although it's rather thin. Make of that as what you will. The radio itself does have a nice feel and as seen here, has a nice solid metal chassis. Now with the battery attached, I think it does look like a nice radio. I particularly like the two LEDs on the top left of the screen. Now the LCD is a lot larger than we've seen on other radios like the Beifeng UV5R and the keypad also feels quite nice. We we'll also get a separate button for VFO or memories and switching between VFO A and B, so no function button pressing to quickly change those settings. The left side of the radio hosts a large PTT button which is kind of indented in the middle. Below the PTT, we find two function buttons which can be programmed within software. Now by default, the top function button enables the torch LED and the bottom enables the broadcast FM receiver. Now on the right side of the radio, we find the speaker mic socket which also acts as a programming port with a supported cable. That's kind of standard these days. Below this, you'll see a USB-C socket which can be used to charge the battery instead of using a desktop charger. Unfortunately though, it is just for charging, there is no data connection there. On the top we find the antenna connection along with a large white LED and a rotary control for powering on and off and of course adjusting the volume. Now powering on we're presented with a large backlit LCD which is extremely clear to read. Now by default the backlight goes off after a few seconds but you can change this within settings. Now as we go through the menu, we can see that most features and functions are there. Nothing really out of the ordinary or exceptional to talk about. What is noticeable is the font used. Now in my opinion, the font looks a little bit thin. Even making it a little bit more bold would have been better, in my opinion. Now before we go on to testing the radio's audio, RF power and spurious signals, let's take a look at this. Now this is the Ritavis RA6A5 radio, which is a little old now, but still a valid model. It will become clear as to why I'm showing this shortly. Now the manual that comes with the RA685 is fairly thick, covering a host of different languages. Definitely better put together than the manual that came with the FT4XR. Other accessories are pretty much similar to the FT4XR. Apart from with the RA685, a USB to USB-C cable is included. The desktop charger is also slightly different. Instead of having a mains adapter included, the desktop charger has a USB socket, so it can be powered from a mobile phone charger or similar. The RA685 battery states that it has a capacity of 1800 mAh, which is much more believable for this battery size. Now given that Retivis is a pretty decent radio manufacturer or supplier, I would tend to believe these specifications more than Giant Pi. Now the front of the radio looks extremely similar to the FT4XR, with a small difference in the plastic moulding just above the keyboard. The function buttons, top buttons and connectors along with the mic socket and USB all seem to be in the same place as the FT4XR. However, there is a subtle difference that you can't see from the exterior. And that's the menu system. As we go through the menu on both radios at the same time, it's clear they start off similar, but then some menu settings kind of go out of sync. 
It's not until we get to the end of the menu on the RA685 that we realize the Retivis has five extra menu settings than the FT4XR. So the question is, are they using the same firmware? Another question is, are the boards inside the same? Now let's start performing some tests on these radios. The first test I will perform will be the transmitted audio to see if they sound the same and if they actually sound any good. This is the Giant Pi. This is the Giant Pi M0 DQW test. This is the Retivis. This is the Retivis M0 DQW test. This is the Giant Pi M0 DQW test. M0 DQW test. This is the Retivis M0 DQW testing. One, two, three, four, five. So to my ears, they both sound the same. Quite thin and a little low on audio, in my opinion. Incidentally, the hum you could hear at the start was not actually coming from the radios. It was most likely picked up by my audio equipment in the studio as I was transmitting. Now standing further away, the hum did disappear. Now before we get onto RF power output and harmonic testing, let's see if we can program these radios using the same programming software. What's interesting here is that you must install the latest Windows driver for Chirp to work with the RA685. I had an older prolific driver installed that already worked with the Retivis software, but it didn't work with Chirp. So the latest driver from Retivis website or the prolific website is required. Now, as you can see here, programming the RA685 is a breeze with Chirp, especially when the repeater book import tool to gather all the local repeaters and PMR channels is used. After creating a memory bank within Chirp, I then sent this to the RA685, which appeared to work really well. I then loaded up the Retivis software, and this too was able to read the new data back from the RA685. What's interesting here though, is that when I tried to write the data back to the RA685 from the official Retivis software, the Retivis software crashed. Now I'm sure I read something about this online, that the official software was a little bit flaky. So luckily though for us, Chirp works really well. Now it's time to hook up the Giant Pi FT4XR radio and try sending that same memory bank that we sent to the RA685. Well, there we go, it works. And I got the same issues with the official Retivis software. It reads okay, but writing back to the radio was a little bit flaky. Sometimes it would work, sometimes it would crash. So with both radios side by side, we can enter into the memory mode and can clearly see here all of the memories that we've programmed. Clearly these radios are 99% the same. That 1% so far is because of the difference in the menu that we saw earlier. So let's now take a look at the RF power output for each band on both radios. Incidentally, both radios have a fully charged battery. The Giant Pi sees an output of around 4 watts on the 2 meter handband at 145 MHz. Moving up to the 70 cm band on 435 MHz, we also see an output of around 4 watts. We also see 4 watts on the UK PMR band at 446 MHz, but please note this radio would be illegal to use on those frequencies. On the Retivis RA685, we see an output of around 4 watts at 145 MHz, and then up on the 70 cm band at 435 MHz, we also see an output of around 4 watts. At 446 MHz on the Retivis, we see, well, nothing, because as default, the RA685 does not permit transmit on 446 or outside of the amateur band. However, this can be unlocked by powering the radio off, holding down the PTT and the VM button and then powering back on. The screen will show factory and then return to the normal screen. Memories seem to be retained, but the radio can now transmit out of the hand bands. Lastly then, let's take a look at Spurious signals. The first radio we will test is the Giant Pi FT4XR on the 2 meter band at 145 MHz. Now here we can see the fundamental on the left and the second harmonic in the middle, and that's about 43 dB down from the fundamental. When we switch to the Retivis radio on the same frequency and power setting, we see exactly the same. So that's good to know that both radios emit the same quality. Now up on the 70 centimeter handband at 435 MHz, 
we see the second harmonic at around 45 dB down from the fundamental on the Retivis. Back onto the Giant Pi at 435 MHz, and we also see 45 dB down. So, are these radios the same? Well, it looks like it from the hardware point of view. With the menu settings being slightly different, it would suggest each radio uses slightly different firmware. But the all important question is, would I recommend this radio? Well, yes, both the Retivis RA685 and the Giant Pi FD4XR appear to be of great quality. The transmitted audio may be a little low for my ears, but overall it's a nice radio. It's definitely one that I'm going to keep. Now for those that have asked me in the past as to what equipment I use for testing the harmonics, it's a tiny SA Ultra. And luckily for you guys, I have a dedicated video on this channel along with links to where you can purchase one. Anyway guys, if you've got one of these radios, whether it's a Giant Pi, a Retivis, or even another make that I've not seen, then please let me know down in the comments below what you think of it. Until the next video, stay safe, thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.